what art sells, what types of art sell the best, and is this something you should even be thinking about when you're creating an artistic piece? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. If we haven't met before, my name is Michelle. On this channel, you'll find art tips and techniques, business advice and social media training for artists. So please do consider subscribing. So if you're a professional artist or you're trying to be a professional artist, how much should you even consider commerciality? Because um, it almost seems like you're selling out, doesn't it? So there's an idea amongst some artists that um, you shouldn't consider the commercial value of your art at all. You must just produce what's in your heart. Well, that's absolutely fine if you don't want to make any money at it. You know, if you just happen to be lucky enough that the thing you love to make just kind of hits some kind of nerve with the public and you sell well. But for most artists, commerciality is something that at least has to be considered. You don't have to produce everything that you make um, with, with the idea of selling it and selling it for a high value. But if you want to make a consistent living from artwork, then certainly whether or not you can sell a piece has to be taken into account. Because otherwise you're not a professional artist, um, in my opinion, you're just... Um, you're just someone who does it for a hobby and there's nothing wrong with that if you don't want to make um, money from art if you just want to do the thing you love there is absolutely nothing wrong with that but for me i need to make money from my art so it's something that i have always considered and for me and this is only me personally speaking for me i feel some kind of validation if somebody buys my artwork i feel that i am you know a proper artist so we're going to consider um from the point of view of both how to pursue your artwork in a way that makes you happy and how to balance that with selling work too. So let's look first at the subjects which sell well. So there is no doubt that um, the best selling subject would be landscapes and probably semi-abstract or impressionist loose landscapes would sell the best. They're certainly the most loved by gallery owners. Um, that's not to say there isn't a market for um, very realistic landscapes, so particularly local views, but uh, Gallery owners are not as keen on them. Now, don't be thinking that it's uh, the be-all and end-all is getting in a gallery because there are significant downsides to selling in galleries as well as significant upsides. Now, I'm not going to make this video about whether or not you should sell in galleries. I will do a whole other video on that and will tell you all the plus points of selling in a gal gallery and all the negatives of selling in a gallery. But certainly for gallery owners, they love those kind of loose, semi-impressionistic landscapes and they always sell well. So what else sells well? Abstracts sell well, but possibly only in very modern areas and cities. Dogs, very popular subject. Dogs, horses, they always sell well too. Nudes sell quite well. Something you have to consider if you're going to be um, a life painter, if you're going to paint lots of nudes, is that there are some places that will not display them. I'm talking about places like um, cafes where artists might sell work. You know, I have um, myself come against this and um, when I've been displaying other artists and I know other artists that have had problems with um, public spaces that do not want to display nudes. It's rather silly, but um, there it is. Some people find nudes offensive. Some types of religions find nudes offensive and some people are worried about children seeing them. You know, it doesn't matter if you think that's valid or not valid. It's just, um, a, you know, it's just a thing. You'll have no trouble selling nudes, uh, displaying nudes in proper galleries, but it's something to consider if you want to branch out and um, sell artwork in other venues, such as cafes, that um, they don't always accept nudes. Now, another thing that sells really well is wildlife. Um, here in the UK, you know, we have, uh, we don't have anything particularly interesting like crocodiles or giraffes, but we do have, you know, hares and foxes and things like that. They're just always big sellers around here, you know, farm animals, stuff like that. So um, wildlife is a really good seller. And sometimes you even find galleries that specialize in one type of thing. We've got a gallery locally that specializes in wildlife pictures. And we've got another gallery that specializes in sea pictures. So you can find galleries um, or art societies that specialize in particular things. If you, for instance, only like to paint very tiny, you might want to join a miniaturist society and exhibit with them and people know what they're getting when they go along. Same with things like botanical art, not particularly loved by galleries, but there certainly is a market for it. So if you're a landscape painter, you might do well in galleries. If you like painting things like houses and horses and dogs and portraits, then you might do well as a commission artist. So what about mediums? Which mediums sell well? 
Now, if you're um, a craftsperson, you really want to look at upping your skill level if you haven't already done so. So there's lots of people selling crafts and it's very competitive. So you could sell beads that you've strung together, but what about if you made the glass beads yourself? So you always want to be looking at getting those, um, those next level skills, you know, the silversmithing, the wood carving, the, um, the hand dyeing of the fabric before you make it into something. So anywhere that you can um, up your skill level and make things really sort of uh, really special and really handmade, that's going to serve you well. And it will set you aside from all the people that are just selling assembled crafts and strung together jewelry and knitted toys. So regarding sculpture, you want to be looking at things like animals and um, nudes and figures. These always sell well. And, you know, they're natural subjects for sculpture anyway. So if you're a sculptor, you're probably not going to have too much trouble um, making your work saleable. So what about fine artists working in 2D work? What about painters and printmakers? Well, it isn't fair, and you know, I'll be the first to admit this because I'm a watercolorist mostly, but oil paintings always sell the best and they sell for the most money. So oil paintings have got that special something and they tend to sell for more money than um, possibly than acrylics. And those uh, probably acrylics and watercolors about the same level for, um, for, for value. And I would say that lower down that is monochrome work and um, things like uh, pen and ink, you know, monochrome pen and ink. Now, this is not fair. If you're a charcoal artist, you're not going to be very happy that watercolours and oil paintings are worth more than your work because, you know, all artwork should be equal, really. It should be about the skill, but that's just the way it is. And it is harder to sell monochrome work than it is to sell um, coloured work and oil paintings and watercolours. Now, does that mean if you love working in charcoals that you should not work in charcoals? Absolutely not. It just means that you want to consider perhaps expanding and maybe doing several mediums. Now, there's a bit of a caveat for everything I've told you about which mediums are worth the most. So if I've told you that oil painting is worth more than watercolours, watercolours are worth more than charcoal drawings, charcoal drawings probably worth more than pencil drawings. If you become extremely famous, all of that goes right out the window and to some extent subject matter does too. So if you become very famous, then pretty much anything that you have done is going to be worth a lot of money. So that in itself is a reason not to give up on the monochrome work if you really love it. So I hope you're beginning to see that working as a professional artist is a balancing act between what sells and what you want to produce. And there's always a way of making it work for you. Now, I'm going to be doing more videos coming up on how to work to commission, how to sell in galleries and how to sell online. So do subscribe and you can watch another video right now.